Greetings, fellow believers, the body of Christ. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm Pastor Ken from Faith Life Ministries to over Delaware. And I know uh, we're living in perilous and awesome times. We're also living in a very wonderful time. This is a time for the glory of God to shine through the body of Christ. And my message today is I want to talk to you a little bit about Psalms 91. So if you want to be finding that in your Bible, please do. Psalms 91 is also known as a protection scripture chapter. It is, <clears throat> excuse me, although there are parts for God to do and there are parts for us to do in it. As we read it, I want you to realize that that the Holy Spirit, He is the one that gives inspiration of all of the Word of God. He is the narrator of this chapter. But there's also some other people in it. That's you and I. So, He's speaking a part. You and I have a part to play in it too. We speak our part. And then we have Jesus the high priest of our confession. And of course we have the Father responding as well. As we read it, I want you to personalize this psalm. Confess the power, powerful protection promises aloud. Do it aloud. Speak it out loud over your loved ones, your family, your, your ministry partners and begin to see them surrounded by God's ministering angels and protected from harm and destruction. And then what I want you to do is also cast the care of it over on Him. That means you don't stop doing your part. That means you cast the weight of the care of it. Remember over in Peter he said, cast the care, all of your cares over on Him. For He cares. Let Him carry them. Let's not carry the weight of those things. It's kind of like here God has said, cast your care over on me. I'll take care of it for you. It's kind of like the guy that's burdened down walking, through the, walking down the road. He's got all his baggage and luggage carrying on him. And he's getting weary. He's tired. He's carrying all this weight. And, and it's like the Lord pulls up in the pickup and says, hey, throw it on here. I'll I'll carry it for you. And you go, no, nah, that's all right. I got it. I got it. I got it. Well, you can carry it if you want. But that doesn't activate God's promises. He said, give it to him. So give him the care of it. Cast all of it. And if you notice, he said, cast all. How many does that leave you? None. So you, walking in faith includes casting the care of it over on him. And that gives us our rest. So cast the care over him, over on him and begin to lean on the strength of this covenant that we've made with him. Jesus, the high priest of our confession over in Hebrews 3.1, his covenant enforcing angels, they listen to the voice of the word, the voice of his words. That's in Psalms 103.20. We're going to refer to that several times says they're waiting to heed the voice of the word. God's word. Well, we are the people that give voice to his word in the earth. So that what that tells me is that gives him and the angels something to work with. So we speak these verses in faith. And the reality of your protection and your deliverance will, be, will become your shield and your buckler. See, it's by words of faith, everything operates in the kingdom of God. The reciprocal of that is words of fear is the operation of this world. That's the world system. The way the God of this world operates, he operates in fear. We as people of God operate and create by words of faith. Are you ready? Let's begin to read in verse 1. 
He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, that's the Holy Spirit talking to us. He, that's you and I, he dwells in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For he will say, verse 2, so let me ask you something. If you have not ever come to the Lord to, to rest under the shadow of, his, of the Almighty, just say with me now, say, Lord, I make Jesus the Lord of my life. I am choosing to dwell under your shadow. See, that is a choice we make by just acknowledging Him and saying, Lord, Your Word will guide me through everything in life. The shelter or the secret place of the Most High is open to whosoever would believe. God has already done His part. If you remember John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever would believe on Him should not perish, but have eternal life. See, God is light. And in Him is no darkness at all. There is no shadow of turning with Him. And the shadow referred to there is His force field, or the force field of God. The force field of God's presence. See, when you said, Jesus, I'm making you Lord of my life, or God, I'm believing your word, the love of God came inside of you, the Spirit of God came inside of you, and that is His presence. And anyone who comes within the shadow distance of His presence is covered by His power, that love. So the force field of the Almighty is unmatched. There is no demon, no devil can stand up against Him. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. There is no power that can match His might or His glory or the majesty. He is the creator of all things. No one, nothing is above Him. So He's saying, and I'm asking you to make the choice and Say with me, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For verse 2, I will say, he's telling you the operation now, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. He's my God and him I will trust. I will say, verse 2, this is the voice of the men and women of God. The men and women who choose to make Jesus the Lord of their life. So we heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. Now we're hearing the, our voice speak. I will say, speaking words of faith is the entrance into the secret place of the Most High. If you remember, God created the universes and everything in it by speaking words of faith. That's found over in Genesis 1. And then he made mankind in his own image and his own likeness. So, hearing and believing and speaking is the way or the entrance into the kingdom of God and into the secret place of the Most High. That's the way it operates. Matthew 8, 8 says that. Mark 11, 22. 10, Romans 10, 10. 10, uh, 17, to activate the power of God's Word in your life, you must speak it in faith. See, because again, in Psalms 103, His angels are listening for the voice of His spoken Word. You got born again. You are healed. You are filled with the Spirit. You are blessed. And speaking God's word from a heart of faith, verse 3, comes into action. Now, here again. Surely, He, God. So this is the voice of the Jesus. Verse 3, Jesus. Surely, He, God, our Father, shall deliver you from the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. Sure, the word surely, in the Hebrew word, whose meaning includes assured, certainly, doubtless, yes, 
Truly, let me put it in other words, it is for sure. He shall deliver you. A snare is a hidden trap. God will deliver you from hidden traps and dangers that you don't even know were there. That is the plans and the orchestration of the enemy. Devils and demons, they're setting snares. Deadly pestilence, plagues, epidemics, deadly virulent diseases. We know of some about that are about. Someone that are highly infectious. And that many, many of them even have brought about mass death. But here, actually through history, there have been many of those plagues throughout human history. But here, look at this. The believer is in the secret place. The believer is delivered. The believer is hidden himself in the secret place of the Most High, standing and believing on God's Word has nothing to fear. Psalms 23 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God Almighty is with me. He's in me. So to fully benefit from the power that God has made available to us, the believer must speak his words in faith over yourself and your family and learn to cooperate with him by listening to his spirit that he's put within you, being led by the spirit because he will always warn you about the dangers and then he'll try to guide you around them. The reason I say try is because we want to listen. We have to pay attention because if we override what he's saying or we keep on going, we could end up stumbling into one of the devil's snares. So pay attention to the leading of the voice of your spirit, the Holy Spirit. John 10, 27 talks about it. Just like a mother hen wants to hide and, and hide her chicks under her wings, the Lord says he will cover you with his protection. Psalms 36 says, how excellent is your loving kindness, O God. Therefore, man seeks refuge in the shadow of your wings. Jesus himself stood on the mountain and cried, O Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you would not. See, many refuse to listen. Many refuse to to heed the voice of God, or even His written, spoken word here. God's wings are not feathers. When Ezekiel saw Him, he said He was fire from the loins up and fire from the loins down. See, in the presence of God, we are surrounded and engulfed by His wings. That's referred to the glory, the power, the fire. He is the power and the majesty. His, the might of His great love, which He has loved us, because He is our glorious covenant-keeping God. His faithfulness, His loving kindness, or His hased agape, love for us, is a powerful shield around us. Verse 5 and 6. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. He said, you shall not be afraid. That is a command. God has commanded us many times, over and over. Do not fear. You shall not fear. Throughout the Old and the New Testaments, because fear binds you to the enemy. Verse 5 says, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night. Well, that could be terrorist attacks. That could be someone break into your home. That could be also arrows or bullets. A deadly or violent epidemic disease. Destructions like sudden earthquakes, floods, tsunamis. 
avalanches, floods or bombs, so on. See, but you're hidden in the secret place, or let me say, or the shelter of the Most High. Isaiah 43, 2 says, when you walk through the fire, you won't be burned. When you walk through the flood, you'll not be drowned. See, the fire won't, can't even kindle on you. Do you remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They got right in the fire and they didn't even smell burnt. That's God's ability. That's God's love on the one who sets their love upon Him. Speaks His words. See, in these situations, read on in 7 and 8. A thousand may fall at your side or ten thousand at your right hand. But what? But it shall not come near you. For only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. See, because we are standing on His Word, because we have trusting in the Lord more than anything else, more than anything else, more than another man, more than anything a man can provide. Yeah, we have those things and that's good, but our trust is in God. He is greater and He is bigger. Because we've chose to make Him our dwelling place. What did it say? No evil will happen to you. No plague shall come near your home. See, the word of His power is upholding you. Hebrews 1.3 said He upholds all things by the word of His power. Verse 11 and 12. Let's go on. For... Or because he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. And in their hands they shall bury you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. See, God is called the Lord of hosts. The God of hosts. That means armies. He's got armies of angels. Mighty ones. They are covenant enforcing angels. Covenant enforcing army of God. His angels have been sent... Forth to minister on your behalf. You find that in Hebrews 1.14. says, are they not all the all angels, all the angels, ministry spirits sent forth for, for the ministering of those who will inherit salvation? See, we have inherited this salvation. And these are mighty beings. I mean, there were, we have record of one angel wiping out 185,000 soldiers for God's people who were crying out for Him for help. Psalms 103.20 says, God's angels are listening for the voice of His Word. So put God's words of protection in your mouth every day. Every day. And here's a key. Because in consistency lies the power. That means being consistent. You keep saying it. You keep saying it. And every time you say it, you're going to hear it. The angels are hearing it. It's being established in your mind. It's being established in your heart. And it's being established in the kingdom of God that you have chose His words over the, the words of this world, the words of the words of the enemy. Because the Bible also says the demons are waiting on your words. So we must speak the same thing. Because we cannot be, as James said, double-minded. We cannot talk one thing and talk another. We cannot pray to God for this and then talk something else contrary. Being consistent. Therein lies the power. Verse 13 and 14. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. The young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, I will deliver him and I will set him on high because he has known my name. Jesus said, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the, en of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. That is Luke 10, 19. Luke 9, 1 says, Behold, I give you authority and power to heal all sickness and all disease. So it's been given to us. The power and authority of the kingdom of God to be loosed on our behalf through our faith-filled words. Let me tell you something. Faith-filled words dominate 
the word the world of the curse and everything in it because the spotless lamb of god shed his blood and covenant sacrifice for to make the way for us to have authority over all the power of the enemy and that includes fear Yes, because God has raised us up and seated us together with Him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That means Satan and his demons and all sickness and disease is under our feet. So begin to see yourself. Begin to see yourself seated with Him, looking down on the enemy, looking down on the power of the enemy. And realize, because you have set your love upon Him, and He dwells in you, and you in Him, He makes it His personal business to protect you. We are His covenant sons and daughters, 2 Corinthians 6.18 says, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. So stay in faith. And trust your Father to take care of you. <clears throat> Verse 15 and 16. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble and I will deliver him and honor him. How is he going to honor us? With long life he will satisfy us and show us his salvation. Now setting our love upon him. Jesus said over in John 16... The one who loves him is the one who keeps his word. That means you're keeping his word in your heart. You're keeping his word in your mind. You're keeping his word in your mouth. That means you're not letting the words of this world, the evil reports of how powerful or how strong or how contagious, all those things, we're not getting those in our mouth and into our hearts. We are to guard our hearts. Guard it, because those are bad seeds. This word is good seed. And the Bible said it be grows up and becomes greater. Mark 4, becomes greater. And then you'll also be a resting place for a shelter for others. You'll be part of that strong high tower which the righteous can run into and are safe. So when you call, what he's saying here is, you will call on your covenant partner God in the name of Jesus and He will always answer. Why? Because He dwells in you. He is always present. He said in Hebrews 13, He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Psalms 34 says, The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and His ears are open to their cry. <laughs> Jesus said, Remember, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. See, He promises not only to protect you, but to deliver you and honor you and satisfy you with long life and to show you His salvation. Now, this word salvation means here deliverance, aid, victory, prosperity, health, help, and of course to save, and it means welfare. See, your covenant partner is your advocate. He's your deliverer in every situation. So if you'll stay in faith in His Word, His miraculous power will cause you to walk on the high places of the earth. That's our inheritance. That's over in Isaiah 58, which is far above all principality, power, mights, and dominions to cause us to be victorious in all that we set our hand to. See, we are more than overcomers in Christ Jesus. So remember, you can act against fear by declaring His Word when the feelings of fear come against you. I mean, I've experienced this. You can make the choice to believe or you can make the choice to fear. They're both choices we can make. If I told you I walked on water this morning, right now I'm telling you, you're making a choice whether to believe me or not. 
Well, choose to believe God's word. And do not fear. Even if fear comes upon you and your feelings are shaking you up. And you got goosebumps on you going like mountains. And your hair is standing up on the back of your neck. You can say, I will not fear. But I choose to believe the word of God. He is my fortress. Now, I'm going to start from verse 1 and I'm going to read it through. That you and I make it personal. I say this often. When I get up in the morning, I say, Lord, you're my healer, you're my deliverer. You're my strength and my joy. You're my salvation. You're my rock and my shield. You can do all those things. Put the Word of God in your mouth. Now let's read through this slowly and we'll personalize it. We'll also declare our position and we'll declare His position. Ready? Verse 1. For I dwell, or me, my family, my loved ones, and friends and partners of the ministry. We dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Therefore we shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. For we say now of the Lord, Lord, you are my refuge. You are my fortress. You are my God, and in you will I trust. For surely you shall deliver us from the snare of the fowler. Surely you shall deliver us from the perilous pestilence. Surely you will cover us with your feathers. And under your wings we shall take our refuge. For your truth is our shield and our buckler. No, we will not be afraid of the terror by night nor the arrow that flies by day. We will not be afraid of the perilous pestilence that walks in darkness. We'll not be afraid of the destruction that lays waste at the noonday. For even if a thousand may fall at our side and ten thousand on our right hand, we declare boldly, it shall not come near us. For only with our eyes shall we see the reward of the wicked. And because we have made you, Lord, who is our refuge, even the Most High, our dwelling place, we declare boldly by the authority of the Word of God that no evil shall befall us, no sickness, no disease, no plague shall come near our dwelling. We loose the angels now. <clears throat> we assign them charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. For in their hands they shall bear us up, lest we stash our foot against the stone. And we shall, by the authority of the name of Jesus and the power of the blood, the kingdom of Almighty God backing us, we shall tread upon the lion, the cobra, the young lion, the serpent. We shall trample under our feet and all the power of the enemy and every demon from hell we put under our feet now in the name of Jesus. And because we have set a love upon you, God, you will deliver us. You will set us on high because we have known your name. We'll call upon you and you'll answer us. You'll always be with us and, you, and in trouble you will deliver us and honor us with long life. You will satisfy us and show us that you are mighty to save. Thank you. I want to ask you to do that continually. Get these words and speak them in faith. And again, if you have not, or you maybe you're not experienced, or you want to make the decision now to be one of these people of the kingdom of God who dwell in that secret place, say with me right now, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus, making your word, Jesus, Lord of my life. I will follow and trust in you. Well, if you prayed that prayer and you believe it, you meant it with all your heart. You have just made entrance into the kingdom of God and into that secret place. Put, continually put the word of God in your mouth and believe it. Speak the word of God over every situation. Read it and learn it so you'll know what is the word of God to speak. And he will cause you to ride in the high places of the earth. Thank you for joining with me. God bless you and may the glory of God and his grace be upon you. Amen.